Hey guys, and welcome to my channel. My name is Daisy. For today's video, we are going to be reading some of my subscribers' paranormal encounters. So if you're interested, grab your snacks, grab your cobija, and let's get straight into it. So let's start off with story number one. My grandmother passed away on March 29, 2021 in her room. We were all in the room at that time since we knew she would leave us at any minute. As soon as she passed away, I was asked if I could stay with my madrina, godmother, to help her around the house and with her three-year-old child. Of course, I didn't mind. Remember that my grandmother lived in the same house as my madrina, godmother. My madrina lives one hour away from where I live with my parents. When I arrived at my madrina's house, she asked me which room I would prefer to sleep in since the house has two floors. I chose to sleep in my grandma's room because I always slept with her when I visited her. Recently, I started sleeping until 3 a.m. after spending so much time talking to my boyfriend and doing homework. My grandma's room is on the first floor, so when you first walk out of her room, the kitchen is what you see, and the living room is visible on the left. One night, I got up to get some water. Once I turned off the light, a black shadow stood there in the living room, and I rushed back inside the room. Since I was on the phone, I told my boyfriend what I saw, and he told me I should tell my parents. But it was nearly 4 a.m., so I just waited until they woke up. I was unable to sleep that whole night. Once I texted my parents, my mom said I should text my aunt in Arizona. Then I was confused, wondering why, why would I text her? Turns out, my aunt and grandmother have seen that same shadow in the living room. My aunt told me to put exorcism salt all over the room and pray. After I did this, my little cousin came downstairs and we were watching a movie in my grandma's room. Suddenly, the lights went on and off. I was unsure whether to scream, get on the phone, or record. My little cousin was with me and I did not want to scare her even more by my actions. So I decided to record. Here is that video. Take a look. After telling my madrina what happened, she told me to stay up with her upstairs. So I did. Apparently, she has had many paranormal experiences and never did anything about it. Since that night, I haven't experienced anything else. When I left her house, my parents and I wondered if it was the shadow or my grandma, since she died in that same room and the same bed I slept in. <gasps> I no puede ser. Honestly, I don't even know at this point. That video did give me the creeps let me just tell you that hmm, honestly i don't think it's your grandma i think your grandma is resting in peace i believe it to be the shadow person just because you saw the shadow and then coincidentally all of these things started to happen and even when your grandma was alive she did see the shadow as well so all you know that is creepy that three people including you have seen this shadow i don't know i think your aunt should do something about it because it's gonna mess up with her electricity bills <laughs> no but seriously like that we don't want it to escalate more you know but again girl thank you so much for writing in and sending in that video i appreciate you girl so now on to the next story hello to start off who is maria maria is something that has been with me since i came back from rellenosa mexico in the seventh grade in mexico i would experience paranormal stuff all the time I eventually became used to it. It was regular stuff, like my feet being pulled. Regular stuff, <laughs> okay. <laughs> like my feet being pulled, blankets being ripped off of me, bruises, sleep paralysis, and hearing someone or something singing in my room. Now you see this is regular stuff? Oh heck no, that is not regular stuff. Let me tell you that. <laughs> that is so creepy. So it all became a problem when it followed me back home to the States. I thought it was gone and I was relieved. Then all the things started to happen again. Annoyed and just over it, I told her to leave me alone and that she wasn't allowed in my room. She did listen. She likes teasing me by walking down the hallway and tapping on my door knowing she can't come in oh heck no girl this is horrible what the heck uh-uh we don't play those type of games like you in you're not welcome here regardless 
She has really long nails and she loves poking me with them when she torments me in my sleep paralysis. She's tall, has a white cloth draping on the ground. Her hair is black and she is extremely thin. I believe she became more attached to me because I gave her the nickname of Maria. First mistake, I know. She's attached and I can't or don't know how to get rid of her. It's affecting the people around me. For example, my brother sees and hears things. The energy feels off and it's cold even when the AC is off. And in all, honestly, I'm just tired of the bruises and cuts. P.S. I love your videos. Oh my god, I feel so bad. What the heck? No, 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 no. You definitely need to go get a good cleansing. Ha seek a professional because that is just not that's not right like no like things are getting out of hand and the por si like it, if it's even like that now i just don't want to imagine when time passes by like no but thank you so much for writing in and sharing us your experience i honestly hope this stops because no for real like i thought like you said it funny but in the end i was like oh hell no so i honestly hope the best for you so now on to the next story. Hi Daisy, I wanted to share my paranormal experience with you because mine is a bit creepy. All of my life, my family and I have dealt with paranormal things. It has honestly become a daily thing that we just all got used to. In my family, my mother and I are very sensitive to the spiritual and paranormal, which means we can hear more and see more than others can. My family would see shadows and hear stuff, you know, the usual. It became normal to us, up until recently. About 3-4 months ago, I moved in with my boyfriend. About a month into living with my boyfriend, I started to see shadows. Two specific ones. One very tall old man and a short little boy. Not too long after seeing the shadows, the noises started. Taps and scratches on the wall. It didn't bother me much because I was kind of used to it. Well, one day I was home alone using the restroom. The house walls are pretty thin so you can hear just about everything. And you know, me doing my business when all of a sudden I hear this man's voice. Hello. I was weirded out because this wasn't just a regular whisper or talking. It sounded as if it was coming through a phone or through a radio. And the first thing that pops in my mind was, well, Maybe his mom left the TV on. A couple days passed by and I started telling my boyfriend everything I've heard and seen. He basically tells me he's seen the tall shadow too. I just brushed it off as if it was nothing. Not even two days later, his mom and sister told him they were hearing the same man coming through a phone or something too. This ended up going on for about two months. Well, fast forward last month. Me and my boyfriend were about to lay down when he goes, Hey, what do you have right there? And I'm like, what? And he points out a bruise I had on my ankle. I don't know how I got it, but I brushed it off as maybe I hit myself and I didn't feel it. About a week later, we woke up and I touched my left arm and I told him, My arm hurts. I think I'm going to get another bruise. Later that day, the bruise started to appear. And I didn't think much of it until I took a picture of it to show my mom. And before I sent it, I looked at it from far away and noticed it was the number 8. What's crazy is that my boyfriend and I have the same birthday, which is August 8th. Again, I didn't think much about it, but I did find it just weird. Maybe about two weeks later, I ended up getting a bruise on my right hand between my thumb and my index finger, again brushing it off. About three days later, me and my boyfriend were playing around and he grabbed my arm and my arm started getting this burning sensation. I lifted up my sleeve and a big bump and a bruise was forming. When it was finally formed, my boyfriend and his sister said it looked like a face.
I sent a picture of it to my mom and she said it was a chupon de bruja. So quickly, I'm going to just explain what that means. So another phrase that people use is te chupó la bruja, meaning that the witch sucked on you. Some people say that at night when a witch is trying to harm you but does not succeed to, then the witch will leave marks on your body. So that's what the expression means. But let's just get back onto the story. So this was when I finally took it seriously. Not only that, in the picture you can see the bruise on my hand and again another number 8. And after that, me and my boyfriend did limpias and his egg ended up being cocido. So let me just briefly explain what certain outcomes can mean, can possibly mean, okay? So if the egg forms with hilos, with strings, it may mean that there are many people who want to see you unhappy with rumors and energy that will affect you. If the egg forms spider webs, then it is said to do a spiritual cleansing on yourself. This is a warning that people want your business projects to fail. If the egg is cooked, cocida, it means that there is negative energy that is around your environment. Energies that need to be cleaned because that's a sign of black energy being done to you. Black magic being done to you. So that is just some interpretations of the huevo so we can have a better understanding. Me and you can have a better understanding of what's going on so back to the story though so i needed about two limpias two cleansings and my boyfriend needed three so far everything has calmed down and has been better oh my god okay yes yes girl we love that after all that we were sleeping with a light on crosses above our heads and candles on and we do limpias more often this was a very scary experience for me because it's never happened to me and I definitely wanted to share it with you. Hope you enjoyed my experience. Have a great day, girl. Love you. Que Dios te bendiga, mamá. <laughs> girl, I love you. Thank you for sharing with me your experience. Thank you for allowing me to know these. Like, and even sharing me the pictures. Like, thank you so much. I really mean it. Thank you. But I am so glad that you did those limpias. Whatever it takes to take that bad negative energy away. I'm so glad you did and just didn't leave it unattended because it was really affecting you. Like the bruises, like oh my god. I know get fail. That's horrible. I'm hoping that you didn't get bruises anymore because that is intense like that is scary like that is on another level of being dangerous so i'm just glad that you're doing way much better that's so good to hear so thank you so much mama love you so now for the next story hi daisy i have another story but this did not happen to me but my friend's cousin many years ago my friend's cousin had her quinceanera and since her entire family could not attend the party because some weren't here in the united states so she decided to record a video of everything that she had received from her birthday. When it came to the point of presenting the quinceanera doll, her head turned towards her. And my friend said that when that happened, she showed her parents the video and at that moment they could not believe what they were seeing. She said they burned the doll that same day and they buried her far away from there. But since then, they do not like dolls because they say they are things of the devil. This is the link of the video of the doll because they decided to upload it to YouTube so that people can see it. But guess, they were traumatized from that day on. <gasps> oh my God, you guys, let's watch it. I mean, let's watch. Bueno, aquí les presentamos a la muñeca de Betty que se la regalaron sus 15 años. Ay, no manches, mira. <laughs> You guys, I have seen this video and I always wanted it to be fake because it was that scary. But now, girl, that you're telling me that it's real? No, 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 no. Damn it. How am I going to sleep tonight? That video traumatized me the first time I saw it. So I could only imagine your friend's cousin, how tramada, how traumatized she must have been. Because, uh-uh, like, she straight up went like... So yeah, poor thing. I'm sure that really did it for her with dolls. She said, nope, never again. And honestly, same.
but thank you so much girl for writing in again mira tonight i'm not gonna be able to sleep i'll sleep with my mom tonight knowing that that is real so now for the last story hi daisy as i was listening to more of your viewers stories memories were coming back to me in a flash i'm flooded with memories right now so hopefully i can get them out with the right details so story number one my mom's house just built in a new development at the time there was hardly anything out there one night i was driving my cousin back home and to get to her house you have to drive through this dirt road that is at least six miles on this one night we made a joke this is where the wolf man lives. Let's pull over and see if we can see him. We were laughing and playing around that we seen him. Then out of nowhere, my car was hit. It rocked with such force. My car rolled forward. We fell into a deep silence and couldn't move. Then we heard scratches coming from the back of the car as well as heaving breathing. My cousin whispers to me to start the car and drive. My car would not turn on. It was only a few seconds, but it felt like forever. When we got to my cousin's house, there was mud and scratches on the back of the car. Needless to say, I only drove to her house in the daytime. If it wasn't for this tar-like mud and scratches, no one would have believed us. This was before our cell phones had cameras. Darn. Oh heck no. This reminded me something like Jeepers Creepers. I don't know. Just the vibe that I was getting from it. Jeepers Creepers. Ooh, imagine. No, but I... Maybe it was the Wolfman. Oh my god. Did you guys joke about it? Because is that like a common thing? that is in your area because i don't know maybe maybe it was the wolf man so now story number two when i used to live with my mom i would hear scratches in the wall when i told my mom she called an exterminator asap of course they didn't find anything there would be nights where i would hear breathing in my room but when i would turn on the light no one would be there other nights, I would feel hands going under my pillow and moving around. Stop, stop that. I don't know why the hell that, that's creepy. <laughs> oh shit. My eyes are getting watery. Being half asleep, I assumed it was my brother looking for my car keys. I would sleep with my keys under my pillow. I know, what a weird place to put keys. <laughs> but there would be times when my brother would need my keys so he can move my car since we had a garage and a driveway that only had room for one car. Few times I asked him why wouldn't he just wake me up and I would move my car. And of course, yup, he denied ever going in my room. I asked my mom, my sister, and even my stepdad. Sure enough, they all also denied it. One night, my closet doors busted out. Like someone kicked them from the inside and then the drawers from my dresser flew open. <gasps> what? Mm, my god. Finally, my mom believed me and got the house blessed. She called a friend that practices in brujeria to come and speak with me. And she said that I have a traumatic memory that I'm refusing to remember. She said, until I finally give in, I will be experiencing these hauntings. Maybe this explains my supernatural experiences. I don't know. That is super creepy. I do not think that that was the case. I've never heard of that to be the correlation of these hauntings. So that's very interesting. Never heard of that before, but the more you know. So now for story number three. Shortly after moving out of my mom's house in my new apartment, I would smell perfume and cigarettes. The apartment complex I moved into was brand new. The landlord said the only smells I should have in my apartment is fresh paint. One night, I was sitting in the living room watching TV, and I felt someone sit on the couch next to me. Before I could turn to see what it was, something pulled my arm. As I pulled away, I got scratches. I had to get my abuela to come and bless the apartment. I stayed at the apartment for only six months. So now for story number four. My husband and I just moved in together. The apartment doorways and hallways were really wide. We didn't think much of it. One day, his kids were playing outside 
and we're told by other kids in the apartment complex that the apartment we moved into, the previous tenant was in a wheelchair, hence the wind doors and hallways, but he had passed away in the apartment. The previous tenant would tell the kids that he was haunted. Prior to learning about that, my husband would tell me he can't use the master bathroom because it creeps him out. He later told me that he would see a woman in the corner of the bathroom and she would just stand there watching him. Things in the apartment would often be found in weird places or would just go missing and then reappear weeks, sometimes months later. One day while I was making dinner, I heard my husband come home from work. He sat on the couch and turned on the TV. I looked over the counter and asked if he was hungry. He said yes but he said it really rude. So I was going to talk to him and see why he was so upset. But by the time I walked around the breakfast nook, he was gone. Then the front door opens and he's barely getting home from work. So who was I talking to? Before I go on with her fifth story, I do want to put a trigger warning here about suicide. So if that's something you do not want to hear, skip to this timestamp right here. So story number five, this one was my favorite. I just sent it to you about my dog, Champ Bailey. Since I'm on a roll with all my stories right now, I figured I would reiterate. Thank you so much, girl, for like writing in again. That means a lot. The fact that you're trying to reiterate, thank you, girl. After my son was born, I refused to believe I was suffering from postpartum. I was in a bad place with my family and I felt completely useless. My son was sick and couldn't come home from some time. Oh, I'm so sorry, girl. For a few weeks, I felt this urge to end my life. Now that I'm mentally in a better state, I know better and that suicide is not the answer. My best friend, my dog, Champ Bailey. Oh, yes, I named him after my favorite footballer. LOL. Had passed away shortly after my son was born. <gasps> he was my best friend, and I think I loved him more than my own husband. <laughs> On this particular day, I felt like that was the day that I would end my life. I was home alone and drowning in my tears of mental confusion. I heard a jingle coming from the living room. I already know I'm gonna cry, stop. <laughs> it was similar to the sound of my chap would make when scratching his head from his tags on his collar. For a few seconds, I forgot he was dead and I called for him. I heard his little paws running on the hardwood floor, but when I didn't see him come through the door, I remembered he was dead. Instead of going through with my suicide attempt, I fell asleep crying, missing my friend and from being exhausted of life. When I woke up, the rope that I was going to use was ripped to shreds. It was everywhere. Then there was white coarse fur all over the foot of my bed where he used to sleep. I remember the dream I had during that nap. I was watching TV and Champ was next to me chewing on a bone and I remember feeling safe again. I honestly feel his spirit came to me to stop me from making a big mistake. But now I no longer have anything supernatural happening. I went to see my mom's friend again and she helped me find my memory. I now see why I blocked it. Girl, before I get more emotional, I'm just happy you are here writing writing this email to me. It means the world that you decided to share that experience with me, such an intimate, private experience with me and all of us. I always heard postpartum is hard. I'm not a mother, but I always hear that postpartum is, can be difficult. And I am so glad that you pushed through and you experienced that with your baby champ. And you are here writing this email to me. So... Sorry if I got emotional, didn't, I mean, I didn't think I was going to get emotional. You got me caught off guard, girl, you really did. <laughs> but let me just continue. When my husband and I first moved in together, I would feel the bed shake. Almost every night, the bed would shake as if something was bumping into the bed. My dog would sleep out in the living room and the kids had their own room. So what was shaking the bed? For months, I would get so scared to get up because of this. 
one night after praying and being in tears i got the strength to look under the bed y gracias a dios nada and thank god nothing then as i was falling back to sleep the bed moved again the movement felt like it was coming from the foot of the bed I sat up, looked at my husband with annoyance as to how could he not feel that? I crawled over to the foot of the bed with my flashlight and braced myself for a kukui. Then the bed shook. That's when I realized my husband suffers from restless leg syndrome. Oh my god, the relief. I hit him and yelled at him for not telling me about his crazy legs. LOL. I hope you like my sticker stories and the last one gave you a good laugh. Oh my god. Girl, what the heck? You almost got me. You almost got me. I was about to say, bless that damn house. <laughs> but love you, girl. I hope to hear mine on your channel. Please feel free to shout out my name. Love, peace, and chicken grease, Reina. Girl, Reina, I love you. I don't know you, but I love you. Thank you for writing in all those stories. That last one, you almost got me. You almost got me. You got me good. But it was such a sweet ending. It was a funny ending. I needed that. You all, you saw me over here crying. <laughs> but no, um, thank you so much for writing in, Reina. I loved your stories from number one to number five. <laughs> thank you, girl. Loved them. So that was it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I want to take out the time to tell you guys Thank you guys so much for just showing me love watching this video if you're watching it till the very end I absolutely love you. Thank you guys so much. And if you're watching it till the very end, let's put an emoji A ver, cual emoji? Let's do the dancing emoji the salsa dancing emoji girl let's do that one a ver, let's see who is really watching it to the very end and if you are know that i love you love you so much like you're a real one no but for real all jokes aside i do appreciate each and every one of you guys you guys are so sweet and kind and i'm so blessed to have you guys a part of my life and it blows my mind that you guys have welcomed me to be a part of your guys's routine that blows my mind so thank you i love you guys and i hope one day i can meet you guys so fingers crossed that is possible but other than that i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you guys in the next video bye